Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Now celebrating 17 years of broadcasting success, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again, both for our radio audience here in Mississippi and our online audience tuning in. Thanks to our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast. Glad you all could be with us as well. I'm so excited to welcome New York Times bestselling author Denise Milner to our program today. She's also the editorial director for Denise Milner Books, an imprint of Simon & Schuster. We really believe that every story deserves to be told, and Denise is not only telling great stories herself, but also helping others to share their stories. We're going to talk to about that journey and some great books that are out right now. Deneen, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, glad to do it. Danine, I have to say I, I'm a little biased with this conversation because one of the books I had a chance to read in prepping for it was by Marquette Shepard, who's been a guest on our program, My Rainy Day Rocket Ship. But you've been able to to be able to share great stories yourself, Danine, but also, as I mentioned, to be able to help other people do the same. How does that feel to know that you're not only being able to fill a space that is, that is really, I think, uh, necessary to be filled, but also empowering others along the way? I, you know, one of the things that I, when I decided to start the imprint and when I took it to Simon & Schuster, one of the things that mattered to me most was creating opportunities for black storytellers and illustrators who often don't get to tell their stories in the way that Simon & Schuster and Janine Milner Books has allowed. Um, When you look at the numbers of books that are created by black, specifically by black authors and illustrators um, every year. Um, some statistics came out in 2019. I don't know if the 2020 ones are out yet. But of over 3,000 books, only about 90 of them were actually created by black authors or illustrators. And so at Deneen Milner Books, I make it my mission to publish African-American authors and illustrators just so that I could open the door for them. Um, And working at Simon & Schuster allows me to also get their quotes up. You know, it it allows me to make it so that they can um, get paid their work for their beautiful stories. And, you know, as an author, my background is as a journalist and an author, and I feed my children with words. Um, I pay college tuition with the books that I write, and I understand that if this is my my journey, if this is my passion, if this is my job, that I need to be paid accordingly. I need to be paid in a way that allows me to do what I need to do during the course of the day. And so I wanted to make sure that those opportunities extended to people who um, have the same experience. Then you bring up a really interesting point here, and I think that is about knowing your value. When did you realize that for yourself? When did you know that you had had something within you that needed and deserved to be shared? Oh goodness. Um, okay, so whew, we're going back. I, I was a journalist. <laughs> I was. I, I started. I, I got my first job the day after I graduated from college at the Associated Press, and I worked first in Newark, New Jersey, as an, uh, as an editor. And then I went to Albany, New York, as an editor, and then got recruited to uh, write politics. And I, would, I did that. There was an opening in the political bureau in the state house. Governor Cuomo was the governor at the time. Um, Mario, not Chris. Uh, and Mario, uh, there, would, uh, there was a need for a political reporter in the political uh, bureau of the Associated Press in Albany, New York. And I didn't want to raise my hand. I didn't think I had what it took to be a political reporter. And my boss at the time, Mike Hendricks, um, you know, said, you need to raise your hand for this. You need to put your hand up in the air and go over there and do this work. You're good. You're, you're a great journalist. You have the potential to be something extraordinary. Get over there. And so I raised my hand, and I got that job. And two years later, I was recruited by the Daily News to go and cover Dinkins and then Giuliani in New York City. 
And it was there that I realized, hey, I, I'm actually halfway decent at this writing thing, and I have a very specific viewpoint. So I, I wanted to cover African Americans. I wanted to cover us in the community, in politics, um, in New York City and upstate New York. And I was told over and over again that I was devaluing my journalistic skills and um, my job by focusing on black people because they were somehow not as extraordinary or important to readers and, and these wow. newspapers of record as they were to me. And, you know, I just refused to bite. I refused to take that as um, you know, as, as, as law. To me, covering African Americans was a beat no different from covering police or covering uh, technology or covering medicine. To me, they were incredible stories that didn't deserve to be told. And at the time, the Daily News was the, was the sixth largest newspaper in the country and had a, an audience or a readership that was about 75% Minorities. So how could you say that their stories weren't worthy of, of covering? And so that opened doors for me. And so knowing my value, but specifically knowing the value of telling stories of African Americans has always been a part of my journey as a writer. And so that translates, that translated as a journalist, that translated as an editor. I was an editor at magazines. That translated, of course, with every last one of my books. Um, and that translates now with the imprint. Wow, and and I think it that that power that you've been able to share, I think, uh, Denise, is what is so so great because you're not only are empowering others, but you also are able to share stories that people need to to read. I think to see themselves. A great example of that is Alice Faye Duncan's "Just Like a Mama," and I think you know people will read that book right, and they will be able to think about that person in their life who kind of took up that role, you know, for them. So talk to us about that. I mean, when you get the messages from the readers, Deneen, about, you know, the books that you've been able to write, the books you've been able to publish, how does that make you feel about knowing that people are getting it and also that they are seeing themselves? You know, you bring up Just Like a Mama, which is, is that's a heart book for me. Alice Faye Duncan came to me with that manuscript saying that it was written to honor the um, familial ties between her and her older sister who raised her like her mother um, because she uh, because she there were just things that that happened in her family that made it so that that had to happen and when I read the story it resonated with me because I'm a child of adoption and my mother is my mother period you know it's it's she's just like any anybody else's mother um, and the, the beauty of that book is showing sort of the heart connection between a mother and a daughter who don't share blood but share, share a life together and share love with one another. And that is something that has been a part of the African-American experience forever, right? You know, um, in the back of that book, Alice Faye Duncan writes about fictive kin, and that is a... Uh, 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 that is the definition of what happened on uh, on plantations during slavery, when families would be blood families would be split up. There would always be a a woman or a, a man who would step forward and be kin to that child that got left behind, or who um, whose mother or father got sold away. And so that that has that's continued through history, think about godparents in the black black community and how they they are charged with helping to take care of a child. And so this book is more than just a, a book about a mother who, you know, fosters a kid in her house and how they get along. This is about a history of us, but told in a way that you can identify with and relate with in a very real way in a today kind of sense. And, you know, those are the kinds of books that I want to publish, I want to continue to publish on Deneen Milner books because they tell about the everyday humanity, but there's a whole other level of explanation and instruction and history that you may not necessarily catch on the first read. 
such a great point. For those who are just tuning in, you're listening to Conversations Live. We're excited to welcome uh, Denise Milner to our program today. She's not only a New York Times bestselling author, but the editorial director for Denise Milner Books, an imprint of Simon & Schuster. All the books we're discussing today are available through our partners at Amazon.com or through your favorite bookstore. Last thing I want to mention, uh, Denise, again, I appreciate you taking out this time, uh, is about, we mentioned earlier about seeing oneself. We know that even among people of color, and, and that is now really being highlighted, I think, when so many people are looking at individuals like Vice President um, that, that we now have, Harris, you know, that people are, are looking to be able to not only see themselves, but also to celebrate themselves. The book, you know, If Dominican Were a Color, I think really reminds us all that you know, no matter what shade we come in, you know, no matter where we come from, that we are all beautiful and we all deserve to be seen. Is that also one of the things that you hope comes through this imprint, that people are not only able to read books about themselves, but to see themselves even in the pictures? Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. To me, the illustrations are every bit as important as the actual words, right? You you think about a child opening a book who doesn't necessarily know how to read yet, may not have someone there who has the time in this moment to read a book. And that child can still open that book, flip the page, flip flip through the pages like if if Dominican were a color, and see the beauty of the Dominican Republic, see the beauty of the myriad of colors of people and the celebration of skin tone, no matter which skin tone you have, Um, a celebration of the environment, and the beauty of the environment and how all of those colors in the land mirror all of the colors of the people who live on the land. Um, the beauty of If Dominican Were a Color is that it's written by a woman named Celie Riccio. She is a writer and blogger, um, and she this was a poem that she wrote 20 years ago, and she shared it with me, and I was like, this is a book, girl. You know this is a book, right? So let's turn this into a book. And... <laughs> And, and it resonated with so many people, not just who are Dominican, but from all of these different countries, these Spanish-speaking countries, where there are a myriad of colors of, of people come in all these different colors, right, in these different races. When you think of um, Latinx people, all too often the, the, um, the, the image that you have is that they're all uh, light skinned or or white presenting, and Sealy is you know making the stating the case for the fact that there are people who look like me with dark skin and kinky hair who only speak Spanish and come from a Spanish speaking country, and people from Panama, from Colombia, from Brazil, from all of these different countries have been reaching out to uh, Sealy and telling her wow, it really is, I know it's set in Dominican Republic, but this is my experience. This is me. This is me. I am dark-skinned, and I I love showing this to my dark-skinned child to let her know that we celebrate you no matter that your color is dark or light. This is a beautiful thing. And so that, to me, means everything. It means everything for to me, that a little black girl in Colombia can pick up if Dominican were a color and see herself on the page and know that she is valued, that she is loved. Again, everyone, Denise Milner has been our guest. Denise, thank you so much for this. I really appreciate the work that you're doing and the time, and hope our audience will pick up these books. We'll make sure to link them up for our online audience. And, Denise, looking forward to having you back on the program again. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you for the thoughtful discourse. I appreciate it. Yeah, the pleasure is definitely all mine, Denise. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Let's go make today amazing. Take care.